Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you can play a song called Problem by Ariana Grande. I went up cabling this on 4th fret to kind of match the recording, but walk through a couple things in root position. And we're going to start off on an E minor chord and some really, really cool licks around E minor. And you can play this a couple different ways, actually. Normally you do 1st finger on the A 2nd, 2nd finger on the D 2nd fret, and if you strum all those together, that sounds an E minor chord and it sounds really, really sad. Now you may also want to think about lifting off the first finger, especially when we start adding in licks to make an E minor 7 chord. Or from the E minor chord, if you add in 3rd fret on the B string 3rd, it's another way you could play your E minor chord. Or you could take the pinky and add it in on the high E 3rd fret, kind of work that as an E minor chord. You want to kind of experiment with those possibilities. And there's this cool little lick actually through the intro that kind of becomes our chorus and our bridge. Um, but that, that kind of comes out, kind of a cool little sax part where you could play second fret on the D string three times, and then second on the A, and then open D, and then second on the D, but then we go to second on the G string for kind of a pull off to the open G. So you're gonna play the two, and let your finger kind of fall off the string to let the sound carry it back. And then we go second on the D string, and then second on the A, and then open D, and then kind of start that over again. So we got kind of that two, 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 oh, two, two, oh, two, two, oh, two, two, oh, two, 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 oh, two, two, oh, two, two, oh, two, oh, two, oh, kind of dig on that lick. Or you can move that lick and make it a little bit higher by taking those same notes and kind of working on skinnier strings. Oh, so we could play the open E three times. And then open B, third on the B, open E, and then go fifth fret on the high E. And I'm kind of digging on kind of a double pull off idea. You could play fifth on the high E, let the finger fall off the string back to, to the third fret on the high E, where the first finger could be, and then kind of letting that finger fall off. So I'm kind of going to five, pull off to three, pull off to open. It just feels more sax like. <laughs> and then we go open B, and then third fret on the B. I think I'm making those higher notes, kind of E, 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 O, three, O, five, three, O, O, three. Or you can throw in some extra E's or some extra notes in different places if you kind of dig on that. And there's a couple rhythm ideas actually you could you could play around with um, the, through the tune actually. You could kind of work this as kind of a down idea, kind of working that kind of an eight down on each E minor, or if that's really fast, you may want to take it a little bit slower, kind of feeling the bigger beats. So E minor, E minor, or you can almost kind of work that down idea with the lick around it. Might be kind of cool, or even working it to the high E. One finger E minor seven to kind of make that five three pull off kind of happen. You might kind of dig on that, kind of working just downs, trying to match the lick. Or you could use a strum pattern, especially if you're backing up your voice. And one of my favorite strum patterns for a four four like this is down down up up down up. So we took the E minor and just tried that a lot. You'd have. To Myself, actually, what feels more more like what the drums are doing is kind of a sixteenth note strum pattern. And what I mean by that is, if you're tapping your foot to the beat, right now we're kind of dividing things into two parts: that are down, down, up, up, down, up. One, two, one, two, one, two, and that's called an eighth note. What a sixteenth note is is where you do a down, up, down, up, or kind of divide that beat into four parts: one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one of my favorite sixteenth note strum patterns is a long down. Down, down, up, up, down, down, up, down. And what I mean by that is if you take the E minor and do it down for four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what you'd be doing on the first beat. Then on the second beat, you do it down on one, down on three, up on four. So we're going one, two, three, four, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, down. Then on the third beat, you do it up on two, down on three. So we're going one, two, three, four, one, up, down. Down it right along with the one, two, three, four. Down, 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 down. So all together, you got down, 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 down,
challenging to get the tempo. But definitely something cool to kind of kind of practice and kind of work towards. And then from that intro, actually, we'll be going into our verse part. And our verse has these cool little bass hits where you play third on the A string, open D, and then third on the low E string, and another third on the low D. And then we go back to third on the A, open D, and then open E. And then we kind of keep that going. Three on the A, open D, three on the low E. Three on the A, open D, open E. And that's kind of our chord progression through our verse and, and, and our, through our pre-chords. And you can kind of match the chords with, with those notes by starting on a C major chord. The way you play C major, first finger goes to B on the first fret, second finger on the D second fret, and third finger on the A string third fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, all oh, the beautiful sounds of C major. Um, now you may also want to think about lifting off the first finger and making that a C major seven. Kind of a groovy sound. Or you could take the pinky and add it in on the B third for C major nine and kind of say some things around C. Or another way to play C major nine is to do first finger on the D second, second finger on the A third, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, that sounds a C major nine. Sounds beautiful and slightly powerful. <laughs> and then from the C major, then we go to a D major chord. We play D major. First finger goes to G on the second fret, second finger on the high E second fret, and third finger on the B string third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, ah, it sounds a D major chord. It sounds awesome. Uh, now you may also want to think about lifting off the first finger. Always a dangerous finger to lift, but that makes a D sus two. Or you could add in the pinky on the high E third for the D suspended chord. Kind of say some things around the D chords in general. And then from the D, we'll be going to a G major chord. And when you play G major, first finger goes to A on the second fret, second finger on the low E third fret. Third finger on the high third fret. And if you strum all those together, ah, it's G major, sounds great. Oh, and, and beautiful, wonderful, and happy. Um, now you may also want to put the third finger on the B string third, pinky on the high third. Kind of work that for your G major, sounds slightly more powerful. And then from the G, we'd be going back to the C, and then a D, and then we go to our E minor chord. And it's basically the kind of our chord progression through that part, kind of C, D, G. And it is a little weird, actually, if you want to match it with the recording. It's almost like you do C for kind of a six count. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then D for a two count. One, two. And then the G for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. C, two, three, four, five, six, D, E minor. C, D, G. So the Ds don't last as long. C, two, three, four, five, six, D. Or if you're doing your down, down, up, up, down, up, and you want to get that D hit in there, then, then you may want to save it for the last down, up. So you'd have kind of your C with a down, down, up, up, and then doing the D for a down, up, and then your G for the whole pattern. D, down, up, up, down, up, C, down, down, up, up, D with a down, up, E minor, down, down, up, up, down, up, C, down, up, up, D, G. down up down up for the D chord. Then you have your G with your whole pattern. Then you have the C with the down, 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 up, up, down, and then the D for the last down, up, down, up, and then the E minor chord. Kind of thing on that. And that can be kind of challenging to get the tempo. Down, down, up, up, down, D, down, up, down, G. That might be kind of cool, especially if you're playing it out solo. You're kind of playing around with that. repeating those parts through the song. Now the weird part is to play along with Ariana, um, Ariana Grande, um, instead of starting on an E minor, she's starting on a, a G sharp minor. So to play along with the recording, what you want to do is take a capo, and if you put the capo on fourth fret, then now your E minor is really a G sharp minor, and your C major is really an E major chord, and your D major is really an F sharp major chord, and your G is really a B major chord. But you may want to kind of kick it off with that intro, like kind of that two, 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 oh, two, two, oh, two, two, oh, two, 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 oh, two, 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 oh, two, two, oh, 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 two, oh,
prior I did. So you know, I kind of follow that lick. Oh, yeah. Or you could work that around the chord with the downs even. Kind of that E minor. just kind of keep it as kind of a down count. And I am adding a little bit of right hand muting that makes it a little sneaky. So I'm taking the flat of my right hand and kind of laying it down on top of the saddle. Kind of dig on that. Or you can kind of experiment with those notes too and kind of say a lot of things, especially if you're playing it out. Or we could use our down, down, up, up, down, up, kind of E minor. Just that bass line, that three, oh, three, 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 oh, oh, B. So you can follow that part, or you can even make that big chord block. Actually, just doing downs can be cool. C, D, E minor. Or you can work the down idea. C, I think about adding to the song those bass notes and a lot of times on that first down of the down down up up down up or the down 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 up up down down up down up you can throw in a bass note for the chord so on the E minor you have low E for the bass on the C you have the A for the bass on the D you have the D for the bass and on the G you have low E for the bass so you may want to kind of try just the, even through that chorus actually you could just kind of work a bass down up up down E minor down up Bases to, to, to get the first idea too. So you could work the C with a bass, down, up, up, D, G with a bass, down, up, up, C with a bass, down, up, D, my Louis bass, C with an A bass, down, up, D, G with Louis bass, C with an A bass, down, up, D, minor. Or you could be working on the 16th and have the C.
bad in a way. C, D, E minor. From there, then we go back into our chorus part. So back around our E minor idea. Now, if we do other licks around the, uh, these chords too, you know, feel free to throw those in. Same chord progression as our verse. So we got our C, G, C, 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 E minor. And then from there, then we go into our outro chorus. So back to our E minor. Kind of digging on that hammer on that idea. of how you get strung through Problem by Ariana Grande. So good luck.